Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and today I want to show you how to make an Iron Man glove. Alright, so this isn't a video on how to make the Infinity Gauntlet. It has nothing to do with the stone. It's literally how to make this glove. This is I am constantly asked this question. How did you attach the fingers? What did you use? How did you scale them? I get so many questions about this. I, I can't believe I haven't made this video already and I apologize for that. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the different ways to attach fingers, the trials and tribulations I've went through and the different ways that you can scale in size and things you're gonna look for when you're trying to make a glove and the comfortability of it. So let's get started and I'm gonna show you basically all the troubleshooting and all the things I've went through through pretty much this entire experience. Scaling gloves is hard. Scaling fingers is an absolute nightmare of comfort. There is no one size fits all. Uh, the amount of trials and testing I had to go through to get gloves and fingers that I am comfortable with was just probably the most annoying thing of this entire build. These gloves suck. These are some of the, this is literally the first thing I made when I started my suit because I knew they were going to be difficult. Getting all the little sizes and everything to move nice and comfortably, I knew this was going to be a challenge and it still is one of the hardest things I had to do for the suit. So with that, I took my time, I printed out so many test fingers and these are actually all held on by elastic and we're gonna go over that. And I wanna show you guys the glove file I use, why I chose it, why I'm redoing all of this and printing out new gloves and a couple other types that I've gone through through this whole process. This file in particular is the Mark VI glove from Thingiverse. It's a free file. If you go on Thingiverse and search Mark VI, there's a link for that down below. There's a link down, down below for everything I'm gonna show. Just you have to browse it and make sure you read the titles properly. So you go on Thingiverse, search Mark VI, and it's gonna be by a maker named Da Dave, okay? And he has an entire free Mark VI suit, and then he has the gauntlet by itself. I suggest downloading the entire suit because the hands in that suit file are cut up a little bit better and a little bit differently. So go pull those open and you'll see what I mean. The hand topper here is from the Mark 85 and this doesn't apply. But real quick, I wanna show you how I attached this. And this is actually just sitting on here with an elastic buckle and strap directly on the back of the glove. And you can see the buckle right here and it is exactly the same as this, a little, this little plastic buckle and it clips in and out. And I attached this part to the actual hand topper and then I attached this to the back of the glove right here. So it actually flips up with some elastic and it's actually stretchy. Now for me, this elastic band right here is absolutely key to this. This is how I make my entire glove, and it is this is this stuff is riddled across the suit. So get yourself some just elastic band. You can get this for like four or five bucks on Amazon, and it doesn't matter the size, and I, I, and sometimes you're gonna actually cut this in half. So with that buckle in the back, it allows the hand topper to kind of flex and move and actually be attached to the hand. I've seen people attach um, the hand topper to the forearm and it looks weird and it falls over. This actually lets it push, pre put pressure against my forearm. So as I flex and move, it actually moves with my hand and arm and gives me a little bit more, I feel like realism and I think it may all makes it look better. So that's how the, the hand toppers attach. And you're gonna have to experiment with this. This obviously won't be a blank at all, but what this allows me to do is actually cover up and hide the fact that I don't have the back of the hand installed. You can see there's a good amount of my hand showing and the file from the Dave is actually what uh, lets me put my hand in this as one piece. It's just one solid glove file and it allows me to slide my hand in very easily and put the glove on. That's simple. There's no assembly, there's no flipping and closing. So I really like this hand file. But as I said, I'm not a fan of the first set of gloves I made. Unfortunately with this file, it is low poly. And if you don't know what low poly is, it's a low polygon file. And it, you might be able to see it in just the reflection. You can actually see all the polygons. So as you add and increase the polygon count on a 3D file, you're gonna get rounder shapes. You're gonna get smoother STL files. A lower poly means it's more flat squares and shapes and triangles. Imagine folding a piece of paper like this, but then if you start to crease it more, you're still folding it with flat sides, but you can actually start to make a round object. That's increasing or decreasing the poly count. Now there are a couple different hand files scattered across Thingiverse, scattered across DO3D.com, and one file I actually got my hand on is the actual hinged file set. Now you'll probably see this, the fingers come hinged, the back plate comes, comes hinged, and what you can do is you can slide your hand into it in one piece and actually close it up. Now I don't like these because it adds an extra step. This was printed at I believe a 90% scale and there is no room in this hand. This is uncomfortable, but it fits me like a glove. But you need room for electronics. 
So what you do is you put a little hinge pin in there and it's not that hard to do. Uh, you gotta get a little creative with it. I just have duct tape holding it on. So I did go and print a bigger one and I've had these sitting around for quite a while. Like I said, I don't remember what scale it is, but now I have a little bit of room in there. I can actually move my hands around. There's rooms for electronics and I can put the elastic and everything in there. So you're gonna have to play around with this. I have a hand file that I like and you're gonna need to find one that you like too. Some people swear by this hinged glove and they love it. I really like the Thingiverse one. I like it so much that I actually just went and printed out four new hands. Now these hands are the free Mark VI ones and I printed these at 100%. And while they fit and I can get my hand in and out pretty nicely, I can feel just how loose they are. And I'm, I don't like that. When I actually bend my fingers over, it hits the inner webs of my fingers and I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I decided I must try these again and scale them down a little bit. These ones are actually printed at 95% and they are perfect. Unfortunately, when I started making the suit, I wasn't writing things down. So when I initially made these hands, they're actually two different sizes. These hands are all messed up and the size comparison, you actually might be able to tell. Obviously, I never have this in pictures, so it's, you, you'll never accidentally notice it. The palm on this hand is bigger and these fingers are smaller. The palm on this hand is smaller, but the fingers are bigger. They're kind of backwards and I couldn't remember what I scaled them to, but after printing the 95% one, I am 100% positive that the nicer fitting hand, the tighter, smaller one on my left hand is 95%. It is a perfect match to the ones I just printed. This is some of the trials you're going to have to go through. You're going to have some wasted palm files. Trying to measure your hand and match it to an STL file. I'm sorry, it is damn near impossible. If you can get it first shot, good. Remember that, save that, keep that, write that down somewhere. Save it as the STL file name. That's what I'm doing now. When I know something fits me, I will literally rename that STL file with a percentage to scale it to. But again, with this, you have to remember, you might be wearing a morph suit, you might be wearing gloves, there's gonna be electronics in there, there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on in there, so you wanna make sure you have the right size. It might be a little bit hard to tell, but after I printed this glove out, what I did is I actually started to trim and cut more of it out because this gets covered by the hand topper. Now again, depending on the suit you're doing, this might not be an option and you might need to add the topper to the back of that. What's actually cool about this file is it gives you a little bit of a back cover that actually slips over the back of the palm and you can attach it with elastic so it opens and closes. And initially this is what I did. You can still see some of the elastic back there. But as I was going through my build, I realized I didn't need this. It was covered by the hand topper. You might need it and it does line up pretty well. Now some of you might not like the low poly look of this and that's fine. What you can do is sand it down. I was actually able to get this glove pretty smooth and especially the front because you don't see the back. The hand topper covers a lot of that. So all I had to worry about was the details in the palm and I was able to smooth them out pretty good with some wood filler, with some filler primer and just some good old power sanding and the front of the glove looks pretty good. However, I am redoing these. They look like trash, the paint's flaking and I didn't put a lot of love into them to begin with. Hence why I just printed four new sets to test out. Now this is another hand file I initially printed when I was doing this testing and it's the, it's the uh, same finger file. However, the palm file is in four to, uh, three different pieces and it's a little bit of a top knuckle piece, a back plate and a front plate. So getting this to combine, using elastic, using buckles, this is all dealer's choice on how you're gonna get this to fit. None of this fit me, I wasn't happy with it, so I made a cute little display thing for it. Here you can actually see the top knuckle part and unfortunately it failed while I was printing it and it slips over your hand like this and you can actually get a little bit more flexibility with it, but again, you have to get creative with how you actually attach it. This is actually the back hand topper of the Mark 39 suit that I'm working on and these are the gloves I'm gonna be using. However, I'm actually gonna ditch the hinge system and actually make these mimic the Mark 6 hands. I'm gonna fuse the back plate on and cut a whole entire hole out so I could slip my hand in and out because obviously there's no cover for the thumb and when I put the hand topper over, you're still gonna be able to see part of my thumb. So I'm gonna actually try to work and revise this, but these hands are much smoother and they have a lot more detail in them than the free hands. And DO3D also does offer a free set of hands just like this that you can do, go and combine fingers with. When you're making Iron Man suits and you're making gauntlets, it's never a bad idea to have a multitude of hands and fingers to just play around with, to make selections from, because this would make a very good display piece if I wasn't wearing it all the time. But in terms of cosplay, I want a little bit more functionality and comfort. Now let's talk fingers. This thing is the bane of a lot of people's existence. How do you make the fingers? How do you scale them? Everything you see on my hand right here was a failed finger, a misprinted finger, a wrong sized finger, something I just didn't like. I went through a lot. I have even more here that you guys can't see because all the STL filers are different. I tried some in TPU, I tried some in clear, and a lot of them are just so outlandishly different, you need to print a couple. And after going through some trials and tribulations, I actually landed on the perfect scaling for the entire new set for my Mark 85. It's sitting right here. And what I personally like to do is once I find a finger set, I'll break the STL up in slicer or mesh mixer. You can go and separate the shell. This way you can actually ex you can extract 
just one finger and I'll print it like a teacup standing up. From there, I'll go and I'll print the pointer finger first because if the pointer finger prints too big, you can typically move it to your ring finger or your middle finger and it'll fit just fine. This actually does fit on my ring finger pretty well, but it's a little tight and it fits pretty nicely on my pointer finger. If it prints too small, you can then move it to your pinky finger and then you're good to go. This is obviously way too big for my pinky. Now from there, you can either do some creative math, but if you printed the pointer finger and it fit your pointer perfectly, go ahead and print the middle finger next. Hopefully it's scaled up just enough, but again, you might run into the same boat. Maybe it's not quite big enough, move it to your ring finger and you're gonna have to rinse and repeat this. The other problem you're gonna run to is length. Now you might print the finger and it might be a little bit too long for that palm. Now in this case, you can actually see a little bit of overhang sitting on the palm there. Now there's a couple ways to fix this. You can either chop the back off, sand it down, scale that part um, in only one direction and shrink it. There's a couple things you wanna do. Again, a lot of people try to fall into this trap of wanting a perfect fitment answer. There is no perfect fitment for this. You are not the same size as me, vice versa, or anybody else. Nothing is gonna fit you right out of the box perfectly. You're gonna need to scale it to yourself. You are going to go through a lot of fingers. When I printed these, I on the gloves that I have, I actually ended up shaving off a little bit at the back. So as I bend my finger, it doesn't actually collide with the paint. And you're gonna have to do this to pretty much every finger you have. But once you actually get a finger you like, how do you combine it? How do you actually get this to secure to itself? This is actually just duct tape together. Duct tape is a really great analog for simulating how you want something to go together. Now, it doesn't provide the flexibility of an elastic band, but it'll at least give you the sizing of everything. You know everything fits. And the reason I like these fingers so much is they have some covering detail on the inside, and I think they look pretty good. Now again, these are low poly, but what I'm doing on the new set of hands is actually sanding down the smooth edges. And as you can see on the pointer finger, I've already gone and done that a little bit, and it makes them look a lot better. Now you can see here on the hands that they're just elastic bands glued to the inside of the finger. So when you're actually bending them and moving them, they actually have a little bit of play forward and you can see the elastic. Now, and it also does cover up your skin a little bit and you're gonna have a little bit of a morph suit in there or a glove or however you wanna attach them. You could use Velcro, you could glue these right to a leather glove or something. Again, that's totally up to you. I like this because it makes it an entirely independent system that I can, again, just slip my hand in and out of completely uh, easy. Now I've seen some people have trouble with super glue and elastic band. The stuff I particularly use is a two part cyano acrylite. It's a very, um, it's a much stronger super glue. And I kind of go over this in my how to attach cosplay armor and pieces video, where you actually put the super glue and you soak, you let the super glue uh, sit on the part and then you soak the elastic band itself in the activator. This way the super glue actually kind of gets sucked into the elastic band and it can fit better. So you can cut this into strips, you can do whatever you need to to size it up. But I definitely suggest trying to mess around with duct tape, maybe some hot glue. This way you can go and kind of play around with the finger and get it sized properly. Test rings don't really work for something like this. You're gonna you're gonna mess up, guys. Um, I, again, I know this probably isn't the tutorial you wanted where I'm just giving you every single answer. And oh my God, that's how you do it. I'm gonna do it exactly like that. It's not gonna work for you. My fingers are different lengths. Depending on what your job is, what your work is, what your hobbies are, your hands are even different sizes. The muscles and the sizes of each individual fingers and where your thumb muscles are in your hands, your hands are literally slightly different sizes and that can actually affect how they bend, how they move and what actually fits on them. The last thing I wanna to touch on is the hinged fingers. Now you might see this on DO3D. I think a couple other makers actually have it out there now. And it is actually a hinged finger set that you can get where they interlock with each other. I personally don't recommend these if you're using them for cosplay. They are great for display. If you have something like an Infinity Gauntlet sitting on a shelf, it looks really cool to see the fingers bend in and out. But the reason I wouldn't suggest these for anything um, over just display usage is if you only have the hinges actually securing the finger together, you can't do this. You can't bend your finger. If you're at a con, maybe you shake somebody's hand the wrong way, you grab a doorknob, you fall, you trip, one of these fingers breaks. You just lost that hinge and now that finger is permanently damaged until you can find a way to repair it. With this elastic, however, it always goes back to its normal position. The hinges are just too small and brittle and unless you're doing resin printing or maybe even PETG, and I've actually even seen PETG uh, hinges not work out too well because again, they're really tiny. And this just gives you so much more flexibility and it allows the finger to stretch forward as it bends where the hinges don't really do that. So again, test them out. It's totally up to you on how you want to you know, play this or do this. But these are the hand files that I like and I, they're, they come together very well. Once they're painted and they're covered, I think they work out perfectly. I'm very excited to remake these hands because as I said, I hate these. Uh, they're absolutely awful. The other thing I do like about the Dedea files is they do have a little um, insert 
for the arc reactor. This is already cut out. Some ham files don't have this. Luckily, the uh, DO3D ones also have it, but they're, you'd have to make a, um, an insert for that where you can actually resin print or resin cast, which I have a tutorial for, the little arc reactors, and then it actually gives a nice diffuser that pops directly into the arc reactor palm, and then it can diffuse the light, you can make it any color you want, and I think it just adds that little bit of uh, depth to the whole project. I hope that made sense, guys. I know that was a lot of information. I just think I talked for 20 minutes straight. Um, it, it might be an information overload to some of you, but I really wanted to give you just all the information I've gathered for these hands. Again, there's just no blanket coverage for this, so you're gonna have to get there out there and test it. I've included links to all the hand files that I've found to date, and I'll put a little blurb down there on why I do or don't like them, and I'll kind of talk, I'll give you a little bit of explanation on you know, maybe one solid piece. This one has the hinge. I like these fingers. These fingers scale uh, small or weird. So I'll make sure I kind of include that in the description to give you guys a little bit of extra to kind of work with. But if it's free, go ahead, download it. Start printing fingers, test it out. There's absolutely no harm in this. It is worth the testing to get a nice good fit like this. I love these gloves. Wearing these feels nice. Nothing pinches, it's not uncomfortable. So it was definitely worth the while. And now I'm gonna have even nicer gloves that I can play with. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, whatever, you want to know more information, um, if you like this video, if this actually helped you and you're like, oh, finally, I got it, please uh, drop a comment down below, message me on Instagram, join the Discord. Make sure you check out the Discord link in the bottom. It's a free Discord to join about 3D printing and cosplay. Go check it out. I promise you'll like it and you'll learn something. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, uh, I, I like doing these videos. I want to put these out. I want to help you guys. I want to teach you guys. I have cosplay tutorials. I have 3D printing tutorials, everything in between and some extras. So please just, you know, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys watching and have a good day. Oh, wait. <laughs>